I know some of you are already uh, married and you're getting new, but I, I just want to open up as an icebreaker because I know sometimes we get a little bit nervous. I know some people here were very nervous this morning. I'm sure some of them had butterflies and almost changed their mind. And I know for a fact there's about seven to ten couples that wanted to do this and you're afraid of committing. This is for you today. But before I do that, let's break the ice a little bit. There was a debate whether computers were male or female. Okay? Male computer scientists stated that computers were female since no one but their creator understands their internal logic. That was funny. The native language they use to communicate with other computers is un un incomprehensible to everyone else. The message back command or file name is about as informative as you get. If you don't know why I'm mad at you, I'm certainly not going to tell you. As soon as you make a commitment to one, you find yourself spending half your paycheck on accessories for it. That was the male saying that the computer was female. So then they went to female computer scientists and they said, what do you believe? They said, no, we believe that computers are male. Let us tell you why. Because they have a lot of data that are still clueless. <laughs> They're supposed to help you solve problems, but half of the time they are the problem. <laughs> as soon as you commit to one, you realize that if you waited a little longer, you could have obtained a better model. Yeah. The last one, in order to get their attention, you have to turn them on. <laughs> Welcome to the rock. What is the purpose of marriage? What is the purpose of marriage? If I ask every single one of you, you might get a different response. That may be different from the women, different from the males. And just for you all that don't know, the couple in the, in the middle there are an honorary couple, 64 years of marriage. It's like a smartphone. You get a phone, all right? And it was created to be a phone. But if I try to use my phone as a hammer, it's not going to work. And there's not an app for that. All right? It's not made for that. And it's funny because not only will it not accomplish the objective, but it will essentially ruin the phone. Marriage is the same way, people. Marriage is the same way, guys up and girls. If you're nice guys and girls, you know what I mean, young men and ladies. Marriage is the same way. We practically ruin the institution because we try to make marriage be what marriage was never intended to be. This is why people are sitting down right now and they said, I wanted to do this, but you have a different blueprint of what marriage is. And so you are afraid of it. You're afraid of commitment. And so my purpose in today's message is simple. Is to give you the blueprint of a successful marriage. Are you all ready? You all ready? Just remember this thought. You cannot make proper use of anything until you understand what it is made for. That's good for everything. And I want to suggest that this verse that I'm about to use is probably the foundational verse for marriage. In fact, it's probably, the, the, we know it's designed by God, according to these three fundamental, fundamental priorities and principles. I, I want you to understand one thing clear, that a glamorous way does not guarantee a great marriage. It, it, it does not. You can spend five million on a wedding and you'll be divorced in a couple of weeks. That has nothing to do with that, but a commitment to the principles of this verse should thing. So I'm going to read Genesis 2.24. This will be our only verse of today, and I'm going to break it down, and then we will... Renew and marry these lovely couples that are out here. It says Genesis 2.24, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his wife, or excuse me, shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh. Let me read that again. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Let me tell you that there are three stages of marriage. Three stages of marriage. Somebody say three. three. Somebody say three. Three stages of marriage. The stage one is the ideal stage. This is everyone's excited, love is grand, our marriage is going to be different. They might get a divorce, but we're not because sex is hot. Everything is great. The men pick up the toilet bowl and then they put it down and see. That, that's a marriage that is fine, it's great, it's the ideal time. But then comes stage two. The ideal becomes an ordeal. 
the ordeal. This is when we realize that our Prince Charming has warts. And that our sweet computer is not nearly so lovely when she wakes up. <laughs> and far and not too often we go into stage three. It goes from an ideal to becoming an ordeal to when the spouse wishes for a new deal. <laughs> Have you noticed that trend in our culture today? Let's hook up. Let's see what happens. Let's live together. And then if it doesn't work, don't worry about it. We'll trade you in for another model. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. Let's shake on it. And that's what marriage has become today. In fact, marriage has been so watered down that people don't even put any importance to it. But as we examine this text, I want you to understand that in order to go to the blueprints and to go to the main uh, foundation of verse, we went to Genesis. This is the beginning of creation. This is God creating Adam and Eve. This is God telling Adam and Eve exactly what marriage should be like. So let's examine the text. The first part of it says... For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother. Number one, you're going to, you're going to learn three things today. The number one thing that, that we have to learn in marriage is that there has to be some leading. There has to be some leading. There has to be some letting go. There has to be some disconnect. Now, I'll tell you, this is not going to be popular for a lot of you. And I know some of you are going to say, man, that's, you're really cool. And then you preach to somebody and like, I don't really like it anymore. In fact, I've been unfriending from Facebook right now. I want you to understand that the first thing that God is saying right here, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother. Now understand, it doesn't mean abandon or forsake. It doesn't mean you cannot call your parents. It doesn't mean you cannot hang out with them. It's not talking about that kind of need. Uh, you know, we understand by Scripture that the Bible says we should honor our mother and father, right? All right? Now notice, it says honor your mother and your father. It does not say bother your mother and your father. And a lot of times, that's why relationships don't work. Because when you said yes to him and vice versa, also dad came into the picture, mom came into the picture, tia Juana, tia Chula, la chepa, la mopa, la nature, everybody. Everybody, and in fact, when there's a marital issue, it's like you have to have a board meeting. And that's exactly what marriage has become. It's become a place where let's discuss all our problems in general. When God said, leave them. Ouch. Pastor, I can't have any communication. No, I can say that. You will continue to always have a communication with your parents. But the moment that you begin to share stuff that you don't need to be sharing with your family, the moment that you tell your mother-in-law what a bad kid your son is, the moment you tell your own parent, you know what, Mom, I, I don't know, I think I made a mistake, but she, she just really, she, I don't know if she's the one for me. When the moment you start spreading these things, the leaving becomes to get ruined. Now, now the foundation is broken because now the family begins to point out. And the family begins to hate. And the family, now there is a division. And then... The spouse wants the, the wife or the husband to say, hey, you know, we're going to go celebrate my birthday over here. Uh, my brother, my father, my brother's birthday. You want to join us? And he goes, I ain't going there because when I go there, they all hate me. They hate me because he opened your mouth. Can I agree? Yeah. Lead. We must learn to lead. It's an exaggerated statement here to remind us that once you all have established a new home, that's what it is. It's a new home. Now, your parents can come and visit don't get me wrong, they can come and visit, there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to be very careful uh, of cutting that emotional and biblical cord. There are a lot of relationships here today that even though you're married, they're still in the biblical cord. You've got to cut that cord. you got to cut it. God's intention to marriage wasn't that you would depend on your mother and your father to make it. God's intention to marriage was that you depend on him to make it. So he says, I want you to leave them. Because even though they love you, even though they care for you, and even though they pay for the wedding, they're not the ones that are going to help you in this, 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 and that. I can make your marriage right. I can make your marriage perfect. But you must leave. Yeah. Amen to me. Yeah. Mom and dad realized that your child was only given to you for a certain amount of time. And like I said, one of the reasons why is we never try the umbilical cord. You have mama coming in. Hi, me, she could look so famished. Does she feed you? <laughs> when was the last time you ate? I don't know, mom. And you go along with it. I don't know, mom. 